Hold on, hold on. Tony! Ah. So many Shambas to shape. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice. While learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on this journeys and share in the farmers' experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Chickens are a very popular bird to keep on your farm. In some areas, they are even considered a staple. But for you to make money from your chickens, you must manage them right. In today's episode, we join other farmers as they get advice on how to improve their chicken farming business. Improved Kienjeji chicken are a good start to chicken farming as they make you money from the meat and the eggs. Francis, yes. how's it going? I'm feeding my chicken. Okay, how many are they? They are around 10. I'm planning to have more. You want to have more? Yeah. Do you know how to go about it? Somehow, I'm not... You're not sure? Yeah. I might just have the solution for you. Okay. I'll thank be you. right back, Francis. Thank you. Okay. Mary and Francis really want to get into chicken farming, but lack the proper knowledge to start off properly. That is why we have called in Vincent, an expert from Kenchik, to get them started. He's been keeping chicken, but he wants to go into agribusiness. So he wants to keep chicken and make money out of them. So let's start with the basic building, the construction, the structure, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to the standard. And after that, my friend here can now went in, into the business. Mm -hmm. What does our farmer need to do to have this basic house that is up to the standards that are required? By using the most available material mm -hmm. within his reach. Mm -hmm. Wood structure, well ventilated, good orientation. If you look at this compound, this homestead, where would be the ideal location for the chicken house? The ideal location should be somewhere there. We get to work bringing down the old kitchen that sometimes also housed the chickens and build a completely new chicken shed in that space. The bricks will be used for the floor. It is hard work. Kamau has a big task. Build a chicken house as quickly as possible. The first thing is building the shade. To measure the shade, the spacing needs to work out at one and a half square foot for every bird. Kamau is building 10 feet by 12 feet, enough for 80 birds. The chicken shade should also run in an east to west direction lengthwise. This is to avoid direct sun or wind going into the shade. It should be open on both long sides with curtains that can be folded up and down to control the heat. The floor should be cemented and the entrance fitted with a foot bath. The chicken shade is done. It is being disinfected just as the expert advised. Well done, Kamau. Now it's time to bring in the chicks. I hope. Vincent, our expert from Ken Chick, is back to ensure that the chicken shade is up to standard. It has been a few days and all seems okay. There is a foot bath at the entrance. The curtains roll downwards. The outside is sealed to ensure no rodents go in. The corners of the brooder are rounded to ensure the chicks do not crowd and suffocate. And we have a nice layer of wood shavings. Just one small adjustment to the jiko and we are done. Before the chicks get onto the farm, ensure the feeders and drinkers are cleaned and dried in the sun. Once done, add vitamins into the water and place in the shade. 
put chick and duckling mash spread evenly. So the shed is closed and warm. Time for the chicks to come in. When the chicks arrive, make sure the box holds the type and number of chicks that you ordered. Don't worry if the chickens are moving slowly at first. They might be tired from the journey. They should get active after a few minutes. So Vincent, yes. I am seeing different types of chicks. We call it cannibal family. Huh? You know, in a family setup, we have tall, short, black, blah, blah. Canbro chicks come in various looks. The naked neck, tricolor, speckled, or kanga, and red. Francis and Mary, Mary mm. have to take care of, of these chicks. When it is too cold, it is too hot, you check on the temperature. That's why we have the heat source. Number two, we are saying hygiene is key during this first stage. Ensure that the feeders, drinkers are clean. The foot bath disinfectant is always availed. Restrict movement of people. These are no go zone for visitors. Mm -hmm. Ensure this feed is clean water always. What about these sheets? This one we are only using them so that the bird don't strain, don't struggle to find where the feed is. Which means the birds will grow uniform. Use the sheets of paper for the first three days. After this, start using the flat feed trays. We prefer wood shaving, but not the sawdust. The sawdust, the sawdust is very fine. So the chick cannot differentiate between feed the and the sawdust. And it should be at least three inches thick to absorb the fecal material that at the end of the production, this is manure. How am I going to feed them? So we are saying the first phase is the chick phase. We are feeding them with chick and duckling mash for the first eight weeks. And we are feeding them day and night. Uh, what about diseases? These are pre-vaccinated chicks. Agnes Marex, Newcastle and Umboro. And Francis and Mary will be given also a guideline, a vaccination schedule. Such a such a day need to vaccinate A, B, C, D. So Vincent, yes. what does the farmer do if they want to add more? You can reach us through our social media platform. Mary and Francis are now happy farmers. They are farming as a business. Mary and Francis are on their way to making good business. Now, for our next farmer, we have asked Stephen Kanye from CKL Africa to come and help us out. Are things okay here? And I think he has already spotted some problems with the chicken housing. Let's see what he has to say. How many chickens do you have now? Right now, I think there should be about 250. Mm -hmm. So what was the main purpose of, of the chicken? The chicken, mainly we have them for meat as well as mm -hmm. eggs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mainly meat. First, I would like to talk about uh, the hygiene. Mm -hmm. One is about the hygiene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to check on biosecurity. Mm -hmm. And when you check uh, on the entrance, we are supposed to have a disinfectant here so that we can prevent diseases getting inside the chicken house. And that is missing. Number two, I've noted that uh, when you get inside, there is a lot of dust. We should make sure that the, uh, the house is very clean. Then also, uh, I've observed that uh, your chicken have not added the right weight. Their growth rate is very, very low. Laying nests or laying boxes, they are not covered, they are so open. And uh, also, I've noted that there are some waste, the bags which have manure inside the, the house, and they should be outside. Then, the last one is about uh, aeration. I've noted that one part is covered with the iron sheets, and when you get inside the house, there is a lot of ammonia. And ammonia causes ammonia burns, mm -hmm. and also it affects the production of the birds. They cannot add weight as they are supposed to. So uh, I would recommend that that part, that those iron sheets should be removed so that we can have a good aeration. Now, thank you so much, Kanye. We have a lot of work to do, yeah. like you've mentioned, yeah. so that eventually she can get the right kilos from a uh, chicken. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, time for our Shamba Shape Up team to get to work fixing the problems. I'm hoping Juliet is going to be really pleased when she sees the work completed. But while the team work, I wanted to know who does Kanye recommend for chicken feed? 
What are you feeding your chicken right now? Right now what we feed them is a grower's mash. Nothing else. Yes. This is improved Kenyaji because we are in business. Mm -hmm. We want this uh, chicken to achieve the market weight of 3.1 kg or 3 kgs in five months. We want the layers to achieve the laying, uh, weight of 1.5 kgs, that is in five months. Also at uh, around five months, we can get these layers laying. We call it point of lay. You have to get the right feed, good quality feed, and also you have to supplement. We have Diamond V, which is going to help in metabolism. It is going to increase the rate at which the feed is going to be degraded. So you have efficient and effective digestion. When you are doing in small scale, you can use 125 grams of Diamond V in 70 kgs of the chicken feed. And that is mixed. That is mixed with the feed. Mm -hmm. Besides Diamond V, you have to add Natuzyme. You want to also to get efficient breakdown of complex feed materials so that they can be absorbed, uh, to make them abs absorbable in the gut or in the stomach of the chicken. Natuzyme will provide nine enzymes and enzymes are there to help in digestion. You use Natuzyme at the rate of 350 grams in one ton of feed. So when you do this, the chicken will put more weight and also it will mature very fast. Besides feeding, you have to check on yourself, your health, and also the health of the birds. To reduce that or prevent that, you provide T5Z. This is a mycotoxin binder. Sometimes you get the feeds that are moldy. Yeah? When you are storing, you get feeds that have got molds, and you want to get rid of these fungi. Uh, mycotoxins, they affect the birds in a way that they affect the immunity, they affect also the health, they affect the production. And that is why the bird cannot add more weight. And besides that, when you feed on the meat from a chicken that has fed on uh, aflatoxin, you are risking your health yeah, to, your, to, your, to your system. Mm -hmm. So to reduce that or prevent that, you provide T5Z. You mix together with feeds. You use 100 grams in 70 kgs of feed. When you feed all these three, your birds are going to add on weight. Uh, within the short, very short time. That's fantastic! And before the day was out, the Shamba Shepherd team finished its work on the chicken shed. The foot bath has been filled with disinfectant. The floor has been cleaned and fresh sawdust laid. The iron sheets have been removed from the windows to let in more air. The feeders have been cleaned and the laying boxes have covers, so it's dark inside. Altogether, a job well done. There's still more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. Caro, what do we have next? Kenyaji chicken are highly resistant. And as climate changes, it's a good idea to have various sources of income from the farm. Chicken are not only a great source of protein for the farmer, but a good source of income too. James has plans of expanding his Kenyaji chicken farming and has already built a large structure to house them. In order to get the most out of the chicken, we brought in Michael Maundu from CKL Africa to help. I've gone through the, the housing, mm -hmm. yeah. but the, the birds are in, in good health. Mm -hmm. They you do not have parasites, that's oh, a plus okay, for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the housing needs to be a little bit improved. Mm -hmm. The down the, floor, the down the floor, floor is, uh, is a little bit muddy. Oh, that's okay. not good for, for the uh, for the birds. Mm -hmm. And number two, where they are laying their eggs oh, okay. is uh, actually not cleaned. Mm -hmm. Then that brings the quality of the eggs they are laying a little bit down oh, okay. and then they also encourage uh, bacteria of oh. some sort so you need to clean that house actually immediately immediately, immediately so okay. that uh, we get the, the right quality of eggs oh, okay. yeah then what i've also noticed is that uh, there is no enough water the water need to be available throughout yeah, okay. so that uh, when they are not eating there they are taking yeah, water, oh, okay, and that okay, is the, okay. the, the, the character of, of birds. Oh, okay, they okay. eat, they take water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're going to improve on those bits yeah, that you said, but now you're going to look at the bigger picture, yes. now that he wants to expand. Yes. How can mm -hmm. you help him? The things you need to consider, number one, where you're going to get uh, 
the, the chicks mm -hmm. is very important yeah. uh, because uh, there are other sources mm -hmm. which are not approved mm -hmm. then the, the bird will take a longer uh, a period or time mm -hmm. to get to maturity yeah. mm -hmm. but now again mm -hmm. poultry farmers, farmers make a mistake because they don't do not plan for feeds and that's a big challenge. Mm -hmm. You need to know where you, you get your feeds. Mm -hmm. Because again, we'll also determine how fast or uh, how fast we achieve your goals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How fast will the birds start, start laying. Yes. So plan for the water, yeah. plan for where you get the feeds, mm -hmm. and also plan where you get your, the good source of your chicks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. So where do you get your feeds? What, what have you been feeding your chicken? We've been sourcing some of the feeds, the green, the greens mm -hmm. from our farm here. Yes. You know the kales. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and then buying unga from the agrovets. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is a Kenyaji match. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then there is these uh, leftover foods and everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you are getting feed from the right source, as nutritionists, we expect that the feeds is complete mm -hmm. with vitamin, carbohydrates, proteins. Uh, minerals. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of substitute maybe 70% of the marsh and 30% of the kales to bring down the cost of uh, the, the feeds? Eh? You need to be very careful on that mm -hmm. because there are things we, we look into when we are feeding our, our birds. Okay. Number one, mm -hmm. is the carbohydrate enough? Oh, okay. the, is the energy enough? Mm -hmm. okay. If the energy is not enough, mm -hmm. then the bird will not produce. Kelts are as a good source of vitamins. Yeah, yeah. Then you can you you can supplement okay. a little bit of, of the kelts. Okay. But should not be the main cause. Yeah. James, like many farmers, would like to substitute feed to reduce costs. What solution is there? I have lipido. Uh -huh. This product has two functions. Okay. Number one uh -huh. is a, a absorption accelerator. Makes oh. All the feed, almost all the feed which uh, which is being taken by the bird, mm -hmm. and then digested, gets into the system. Okay. When well, it makes sure that uh, there's no waste in okay. terms of nutrients. Oh. So you eat less, you get more from the feed. Okay. So definitely, once you use this product, mm -hmm. the production will go up. Okay. Yes. For lipidol, mix one tablespoon of lipidol or ten grams of lipidol per ten kilos of feed. Kenyaji chicken are good in the sense that they can be fed on kitchen and farm leftovers to reduce on cost, but it's important to ensure the feed is safe. What does Michael recommend? There is another product which is very important in such because it's a toxic binder. Yeah. If the animal or the bird takes aflatoxins, mm -hmm. then this product will bind their aflatoxins in the feeds so that it is not harmful to the to the animal or to the bird. Give one tablespoon of T5Z for every 10 kilos of chicken feed. Are these products easily available? Yes, they are. Walk into any agrovet, you get the products okay, okay. readily available, okay. yes. With that information, James can now confidently work towards having more chicken. Thank you, Caro. Now, how is the weather this week? Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up weather and farming news for Kenya. In the coming week, we expect no or very little rainfall across Kenya. North, Upper and Lower Eastern, including Mandera, Wajia, Isiolo, Meru, Taraka, Kitui, Makweni and Kajiado, will see very low rains of less than 5 mm across the week. However, lower parts of Garissa will get up to 25 mm of total rains. Coastal counties will get moderate levels of rains, ranging up to 25 mm across the week. This includes Lamu, Kilifi, Mombasa and Kwa. Tana River and Taitataveta, however, will have lower total rains of below 15 mm, but areas near the coastline will get up to 25 mm of rains in the week. The central Kenya counties such as Moranga, Kirenyaga and Embu, as well as Nairobi and Kiambu will see very low rains of less than 5 mm across the week. Lake Kipia, Nyandarwa and Nyeri, however, might see up to 50 mm of total rains. Most of the north, central and south Rift Valley counties will have moderate rains of up to 50 mm across the week. 
Pacific. This cuts across to Kana, West Pokot, Baringo, Wasingishu, Kericho, Bomet, Nakuru, to Narok. Western Nyanza regions will have low to moderate levels of rains, ranging between 5 to 50 millimeters in the week. This spans across counties of Busia, Kakamega, Bungoma, Vihiga to Siaya, Kisumu, Nyamira, Kisi, and Miguri. Farmer control pest alley with recommended pesticides as cases of pest attack on crops may increase with reduction of rain. If you have livestock, pasture may reduce with low rains. Reduce their numbers by selling some when they are still healthy and have weight to fetch good prices. Irrigate your fruit trees with a water bottle. Get a plastic bottle, poke a couple of holes on the lid, fill the bottle with water and replace the lid. Dig a hole next to the plant and insert the bottle upside down. Refill the bottle whenever it runs out. For more tips and detailed forecasts for your area, get in touch with I Shamba. Call 0711-082-606. I am Brenda. See you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. I say chickens are very popular in many homes. Carol, what did you find out? I'm surprised. The Maasai don't usually keep chicken. Yet Steve and his wife Miriam have 40 chickens, both pure and improved kenyages. They keep them for eggs and the meat. But how did the family and the community react? Because this is very unusual. You know, our community really doesn't value the chickens. Mm. The first time we introduced it, it was like Melete mm. Ndege uh, You brought oh, birds yes, home. You brought mm -hmm. birds home. All those sort of things. Yes. But my dad took it very positively. And he says that you can do it <laughs> and you can always do, do more. Mm -hmm. This is also a very good business. It's the fastest business. Mm -hmm. So many people are coming here. It's either they borrow the eggs or some even buy. But there's even a more surprising reason behind Steve's choice. Our cows roam. Mm -hmm. They go look for pasture, then they even they come back. They come back. We spray them after every seven days. But because our animals, they meet with the wildlife, the tick uh, prevalence becomes so high in this area. Mm -hmm. So the seven days, you'll see that it is a little bit time and the animals will be again having ticks uh, during the week. Okay. It's not that the acaricides, the acaricides don't work, mm -hmm. they work, mm -hmm. but the area is populated with the wild animals. Okay. Even if you sprayed two to three days, you'll see, start seeing ticks in an animal. In that day, the chickens will always be on the herd. Mm -hmm. Instead of us doing the hunt picking, now these are the people who are doing for us the hunt ah. picking. They know and the animals are already plenty to them. So wow. they don't even run away. In fact, they love when they see chickens around them. You see him relaxed, waiting for the ticks to be picked out. Mm -hmm. So the only tick this one will take, it's the one it, they can see. Mm -hmm. Spraying again, it's very necessary. Okay, the, the they just help, yeah, they yes. aid. Yes. Where did you get to learn all this? I'm a vet. I knew that there is a good relationship between the, uh, the chickens and the cows. The pure kienyeji one are known for that roaming. And what the pure kienyeji does, this one they follow. Uh -huh. If today she passed across while the pure kienyeji is picking, picking the, on the ticks tick. from the animals, uh -huh. they'll also realize that there's some, something that is edible on the skin of the cow. Uh -huh. How yes. do you manage your chicken? F the first thing I do in the morning. Yes. I let them roam inside the, the kettle herd. Mm -hmm. After they did their part, each time I pass here, or Miriam passes here, you'll see them following. Mm -hmm. That tells you they have already done their job, and now they want something to supplement what they have already fed on. All right. So by that time, we come up with the feeds. There used to be a time that when you come here, you can't even stand because of the smell. That is when I introduced the Diamond V. Diamond V is a metabolized yeast. And when you feed your chicken Diamond V properly, it will reduce the gases in the uh, waste. Mm -hmm. So the, that ammonium gas that whenever you go there, you feel that you are tight. You can't by, breathe. You can't breathe. Mm. So when we introduce Diamond V to our chickens, that smell is no longer there. Mm -hmm. The chicks live freely. Number two, Diamond V also I increase the production. When you give Diamond V properly, they will pay you back by production of eggs. Oh, Almost all of them are now laying. Steve mixes two tablespoons of Diamond V. 
into four kilograms of chicken feed. That's enough for his 40 chicken per day. Wow, that was an interesting bit. Chickens helping out the cows by removing ticks. Remember, today we are all about chicken. What's next, Karo? Rachel has 240 Kenyaji chicken and she's planning to add more so that she can start selling both chicks and eggs. Keeping pure Kenyaji chicken for business can be challenging, especially with climate change where low rainfall and high temperature affects feed production. Before we repair the chicken house for Rachel, let's find out what kind of chicken she wants and why she wants to keep them. I have invited Simon, a livestock expert, to come and share ideas with Rachel on the best breed to keep considering climate change. Uh, Simon, as an expert, you've done your inspection. Yeah. What have you observed? I went round. I saw uh, the chicken running around into the cow sheds. Uh, they look healthy, but uh, they need more improvement. I also went to the chicken house and uh, I observed that uh, before you enter the uh, chicken house, you are supposed to have a footpath. Somebody is supposed to disinfect before you get inside. Uh, that one was lacking. And then I also saw uh, the feeders were not enough. The area where the chicken are being uh, kept is not a proper chicken house. Why did you decide to keep Kenya? One, because uh, I find them tastier. Mm -hmm. And they're not expensive to keep, really. Yeah. All right. So you've been like doing it the, the freestyle way. Yes. So long as there's something they can eat and also leave them to walk around and get the food. Yes. And, and now you want to go commercial. You now, want to go big. Now I want to go big. Uh -huh. mm. So yeah. is she keeping the right breed? Is she feeding them well? well what should she, what yeah. should she do? Uh, chicken is uh, one way of uh, uh, getting income from it if you keep it uh, commercially. Mm -hmm. Because um, from what Rachel is saying, she has been doing it as a hobby. The breed she's keeping, she can still keep a better breed called improved Kienyeji mm -hmm. from curry, mm -hmm. which has um, a faster growth. That is by six months, uh, you will be able to sell your, your cocks at uh, around one and a half kilos. Uh, they also uh, produce more eggs and uh, bigger eggs which you can get more money. With heat stress that affects both feed production and birds themselves, farmers can get climate smart chicken from Calro that are resilient to hot temperatures as a way of adapting to climate change. So uh, Rachel, how long do your chicken take before they are ready for sale in terms of meat? Seven to eight months, mostly eight, mm -hmm. uh, depending on what they are eating out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's eight months for the yes. Kenyaji chicken? Yes. And, and uh, Simon says for the improved chicken, it mm. takes uh, at most five, five to, six, to months. six months. So when you yeah. weigh the options, mm. it's yeah. better when yeah. you have the improved chicken. Oh yes. Mm. Good. Mm. With improved chicken, Rachel will have her cocks ready by six months, her chicken laying eggs from the fifth month, and she can expect to start earning from the business after the sixth month. And where do I get improved energy? Uh, you'll get the, the, the chicks from curry. Naivasha, who are the breeders, and then uh, you now start becoming a reputable farmer, and uh, you will be able to rear them commercially uh, to produce uh, more eggs and meat, and also to give you more income in your farm. Yeah. So Rachel, how long do your chicken take before they start laying eggs? About um, five to six months. Five to six months. Yes. All right. Yeah. Uh, Simon. How long does the improved chicken take before it starts laying eggs? The improved Kenyaji, by five months, they are able to start laying eggs. In fact, some even four months, they are, they are able to start laying eggs. Okay, uh, does, does it depend on the feed, on the, on the way you feed them? Of course, it depends on the way you feed them to lay more eggs. To lay more eggs. Yeah, because if you don't feed them, of course, you'll not get eggs. Yeah, so you also have to look at the issue of nutrition, that giving them energy, mm -hmm. giving them uh, the vitamins, mm -hmm. and uh, also giving them minerals, so that they can, you can uh, reap maximally on the, on the products of the improved Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow, mm. thank you so much mm. uh, for the information. Mm. I'm sure it's going to be valuable uh, to Rachel yes, thank you. to help jumpstart and kickstart her career in uh, agribusiness. Mm. We wish you well. 
Thank go you. ye and prosper. Okay. Thank you. All right? Mm. But mm. we still have one more thing to do. Remember the chicken house? Yes. Mm. The expert has arrived. Let's go find out what they have for us. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Caro. That was interesting. And the information will not only help Rachel, but many other chicken farmers too. If you need more information, please get in touch with Aishamba on 0711-082-606. See you next week on another exciting show of Shamba Shape Up. Thank you.